Inside the stories that affect you. This is Inside Keloland. Good evening and thanks for joining us on this special edition of Inside Keloland. In less than 24 hours, the Sanford International will take over Minnehaha Country Club in Sioux Falls. This is the second year of the tournament with big names such as John Daly, B.J. Singh and Tom Lehman once again committing to the event. Organizers have also spent the last year improving the spectator experience with more facilities, food and activities to check out. Over the next half hour, we'll show you the last minute preparations ahead of the tournament and what you can look forward to over the next week. Joining us now is tournament director Greg Conrad. Greg, it's year two of the Sanford International. I'd imagine you're excited and ready to go. Yeah, it, it's real exciting. It's always good to uh, have year one under your belt. You learn a ton of things and, and you see the tremendous support and it kind of gives you a gauge for what you need to plan for year two. So we're ready to go. We're excited. We've got everything in place. Uh, we're, we're ready to welcome Sioux Falls to Minnehaha Country Club for sure. I, I'd imagine it's a long list, but what was the biggest takeaway from year one that you are putting into effect this year? I think the biggest takeaway, uh, well, there's really three. I would say number one, uh, obviously the people of this community are amazing. Uh, just from the standpoint of what the city and the, the superintendent and the club and Sanford Health, they all did to pull this event off in year one. I mean, we were pumping millions of gallons of water into the levee on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday to get this golf course ready. Obviously, everybody knows about the helicopter. And, but all the things that took place to get this thing ready, it's like, hey, you know what? If we've got a challenge, the people of the Dakotas are there to solve it. So that's number one takeaway. Number two takeaway uh, is the tremendous fan support. I think that was phenomenal. It was really cool. And uh, I was told how Sioux Falls comes out and supports their events. It happened. Um, and then so I think the third takeaway uh, for me from a positive standpoint is how much the players loved the event and how much the players loved playing in front of crowds. That was really cool. And, uh, and, and honestly, I've had to do zero recruiting. Uh, the players heard about the event through the grapevine. Uh, the best way to, to, uh, to have your product sold is by having everybody else telling you how great it is. So the, all the players were talking to other players about how great this event was and what great fan support uh, there's been. I just got off the phone with Bernard Longer and he was like, you know, I've just heard all these great things about Sioux Falls and the great fan support. And he said, I wanted to be here. So it was, it was great to hear. What can fans expect this year? What improvements have been made? Uh, just talk about the, the fan experience. Absolutely. So I would say oh, overarching, uh, everything's just a little bit bigger and a little bit better. Obviously, when you learn some things, you're able to do things a little bit better, make things a little tighter. Uh, the weather has been uh, more helpful for us, so we've been able to position concessions, restrooms, and those type of things in better places. But we have more spectator seating throughout the golf course, more concession areas throughout the golf course, and, and more restrooms. So all the comforts of home, uh, we We've really elevated uh, that experience. Our goal uh, from day one after the tournament was to make this the year of the fan and make sure that we enhance the spectator experience. Uh, one thing I do want people to know that, that when you're coming from home, there's two things you really need to think about coming from home that are different than last year. Number one, uh, due to the world we live in, uh, we now have to have metal detectors at, our, at both entrances. That would be the Great Life entrance off the levee and the Drive Safe South Dakota entrance, which, uh, which you know, if you drive a car, that's where you'll, where you'll end up. Uh, both those entrances will have magnetometers, so plan a little bit extra time to go through the metal detectors uh, when you get on site. So we ask people to just leave a little bit early. The gates open on Friday, Saturday, Sunday at 8 a.m. and 7 a.m. on Wednesday, Thursday. So we, we're opening up the gates early just to give people a little extra time. The other thing I'll tell you, which is really cool, we now have a Sanford International app, which you can go to our website and download the app um, either through the Google Store or through the App Store. Uh, that app will basically be able to tell you where you are in the golf course and where everything else is on the golf course. So, so when you download that app, there'll be a little blue dot. That blue dot is you. So once you find you on the golf course, then you can uh, find out all the different things that are around you, whether it's a player, uh, whether it's a restroom, whether it's a concession stand, whether it's a place where you can watch football, whatever it is, you'll be able to find it on that app. So we encourage people to download that app. You can go to SanfordInternational.com and get it. It's a free app, compliments of Sanford Health, um, and uh, it's going to be really cool. It's, we kind of modeled it after uh, major championships, the Masters and U.S. Open, those kind of things, so we really feel like we've got something that will be helpful for the fans. 
what's the best way for fans to get here? You can't just park out at the front entrance right. and, and walk on in. I wish I wish they could. <laughs> uh, but here's the cool thing. We are going to have all the parking at the Empire Mall. So thanks to our partners at the Empire Mall, all parking for general spectators will be at the Empire Mall. That also includes volunteers. Short bus ride. It's an air-conditioned bus ride. It's an easy thing. I promise you, you will uh, have a shorter walk by going to the mall than you will by parking in the neighborhoods and, and crossing streets. But uh, all the parking is at the mall, and so just encourage people to head that way. And of course, if you have any questions or anything along those lines, you can look at, we have all the directions on our app, and we also have it all on our website as well. Uh, you will not have your defending champion here in Steve Stricker, but uh, that's kind of exciting, too, knowing that somebody new is going to be hoisting the trophy at the end of the weekend. Absolutely, and we've got, I think we've got one of the best fields um, on tour right now. We probably have uh, 35, the top 38 players in the world coming here this week. So uh, we're going to have a great champion. Obviously, we had a great champion in Steve Stricker, um, and we know he's coming back in 2020. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. We've got the Ryder Cup, cap, cap, excuse me, we've got the Ryder Cup captain coming back here in Sioux Falls in 2020, just a couple weeks before he takes on the world in the Ryder Cup. So all things good, but we'll have a new champion and uh, the players are really excited. I've been amazed how many players are coming in early just to hang out, get some practice rounds in, go pheasant hunting, uh, <laughs> go fishing, just enjoy the great outdoor life of the Dakotas. So uh, kudos to, uh, to uh, South Dakota. They've really rolled out the red carpet and uh, I'm excited to show us off to 330 million homes worldwide. It'll be awesome. Well, thank you and enjoy the tournament. Thanks, Travis. There you have it, uh, Greg Conrad. Coming up after the break, we're talking with the ground superintendent here at Minnehaha Country Club about how the crews have transformed the course ahead of the tournament. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Inside Kelloland. We're getting ready for the Sanford International here at Minnehaha Country Club. Joining us now is David Swift, the ground superintendent here at the course. And speaking of the course, how are things after the severe weather that rolled through this week? Course still in good shape? Good shape. Kind of wet. <laughs> kind of wet. Um, but we'll be okay. It's uh, a lot of sticks, a lot of, a lot of debris in the ground. We got lucky. I mean, we're only a half mile away. So I think we lost five trees, some big limbs this time. We had a storm earlier in the summer that knocked a little stuff out of the trees. Mm -hmm. So this time around it was a little more you know, bigger stuff, but uh, we've got a good team, we'll be ready. No but fortunately it wasn't the chalets, it wasn't anything no, of that magnitude, no. it was just they a lost, few branches. Yeah, I think they lost one tent and everything else. They did a pretty good job. These guys, they know what they're doing. They, they anchor stuff in the ground and you know, at midnight the other night, I was kind of worried I drove in here with with uh, my boss Ted and we were kind of high-fiving, you know, everything looked good. I was imagining stuff laying in the middle of 18 green, and, you know, I didn't know what to expect, but it was pretty good, pretty relieved. This is the second year of the Sanford International. What did you learn in year one that you took to year two? Ooh, that's a good question. You know, you can't plan enough, but uh, you gotta have fun. I mean, this is a neat deal for the city and, you know, we've got a good team. We get a lot of support. The membership is everybody, Everybody that's, we're all kind of in this together. And and uh, last year it was a, a interesting year leading up to this event with just a lot going on here at the club. And this year it's much more laid back and we're looking forward to it, you know. Did it make it easier having done it last year to get ready or, or is it uh, still a work in progress here? Yeah, you know, I'm, I try to keep things simple and you find something that works, you stick with it. And we had a good plan last year and, you know, with the weather that we dealt with last year, it worked great. And uh, you try to keep the same people around, but the same plan, same blueprint. Uh, you had to alter the course a little bit last year just in preparation for an event of this magnitude. Uh, any changes to the course that uh, significant compared to last year? Not much. Um, you know, we're fighting in our world. We, we have our own agenda and, uh, you know, trees. And, and, and we have a lot of trees out here. With the Emerald Ash Bore in town, we're we're uh, being very proactive in removing trees, and with that, you you get better views. So I think uh, I think you'll see a lot of that this year, and we're we're looking forward to it. In the next few years, it'll be even better. How does a course play for the pros compared to uh, your members on a daily basis? Well, you know, pretty much the same. The rough is much longer for these guys. Um, the greens, I think this year the greens will be a little quicker. We we typically have pretty fast greens and this year with all the rain um, we've been very consistent 
and I think they're going to play the same golf course. Uh, it's just a little wetter this year. It sounded like last year the, the pros were impressed with the greens and, and how true they rolled. Uh, what, what kind of feedback did you get from them? Uh, you know, everybody was pretty happy. I think they were surprised after all the rain that uh, the course was very playable and the greens were, you know, still receptive and fast. And, um, you know, these are old, 100-year-old greens, sloped greens. Um, they didn't build them with bulldozers back then. They had steam shovels and, you know, other tools, I guess. But a um, lot of pitch, a lot of surface strange on the greens. They can be fast. You don't want to be above the hole. I hear you have some help out on the course, uh, day to day anyway, maybe not during the tournament, but uh, a dog following you around. Yeah, I got a dog following <laughs> me around. She's supposed to chase geese and uh, she'll swim up to him and say hi maybe, but uh, she's a pretty friendly dog and uh, I don't know, it brings a smile to people's faces. It's kind of another part of our team. And I think she's in the dog house this morning yeah, though she, because of... She ate my breakfast, so <laughs> she's in the office for a while. Plus it's, it's muddy out there. And, <laughs> so we'll keep her inside for a little while. Now you had a, a wet course out there right now. It was very wet last year. Uh, you brought in a helicopter. How, how do you prepare for wet weather? Is that uh, is the chopper and storage here ready to go? <laughs> or that. Um, you know, we've been very wet all year. I think this is going to be our wettest year on record. And, uh, you know, we try to try to water as little as possible. We have these tools and uh, we, they're called moisture meters. And we stick, stick them in the ground hundreds of times a day. So we only give the golf course water when it needs it. And uh, so hopefully it can you know, dry out in the next couple of days. And like you said, it's just been one of those years. We've had the snow, we had the flooding early in the spring. Uh, they've kept you on your toes uh, so far this year, I'd imagine. There's always something, there's always something. Mother Nature's gonna win. And uh, we just try to prepare, prepare the best and uh, let her do her thing. And we get back out there and do what we need to do. Enjoy the tournament. I will. Thank you. All right. Thank you, David. Stay with us. Coming up on Inside Kelloland, we're talking with the head golf pro here at Minnehaha Country Club. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Inside Kelloland. In just a few days, 70 professional golfers will take to the course here at Minnehaha Country Club for the second Sanford International. Right now, I'm joined by the head pro here at the Minnehaha Country Club in Justin Freudenberg. And uh, welcome, Justin. Thank you. Glad to be here. I, I know you're fairly new. How long have you been here at Minnehaha Country Club, and how's the experience been? I started up here April 18th of this year, so, uh, you know, we're looking on almost five months now. It's been a great experience. It's been quite a roller coaster ride, just getting to know our membership, the club everything that's going on and now we have this knocking at the doors here at the club. How tough is it to come to a new course and learn the course along with everything else that you just mentioned? It's been a juggling act of different tasks. That's part of the reason I love my job. There's a bunch of different varieties of different things that I'm doing throughout each day. You know, I could be teaching lesson um, behind my desk, answering emails, uh, answering phone calls, running a tournament. There's just a bunch of different things that kind of involve it, merchandising, all-encompassing, um, and it kind of makes it fun, but uh, also makes it a challenge, kind of especially off the get-go. This is your first year dealing with the Sanford International. What are you looking forward to about the tournament? I think it's going to be really exciting next week. I mean, the community obviously supports it. Um, we get a great crowd, obviously great feedback from sponsors. Uh, our membership is very supportive, um, you know, and bringing some of the best players of the world, you know, come in here and be able to test the golf course and kind of see how they fare. Uh, it's just going to be overall exciting to kind of be a part of it all. Who are you excited to see? I mean, there's a lot of big names come in. You got the John Daly's of the world, Davis Love the third, Tom Lehman. Uh, is there anybody that piques your interest? There's a lot of exciting names to see. Uh, you know, I'm kind of excited for Davis Love and uh, Bernard Longer, those are kind of two big names that got added this year that obviously with Bernard Longer's success on the senior tour and everything, um, it's hard to kind of replicate that and he's been quite dominant. So you got some new faces in there and we'll kind of see how everything unfolds next week. Tournament will be without its defending champion though and Steve Stricker, uh, you know, too bad that he wasn't able to make it, but uh, at the same time that means we've got a new champ this time around. It is, it is. I mean, he was a 
He was a fantastic champion to have for our inaugural event last year. Really represented the event well. Um, it's kind of unfortunate he won't be making it, but it leaves a, leaves a door for someone else to create their own path. How do you expect the course to play? I, I know we're still days away. You don't know if we're going to get more rain, if it's going to dry out, or, or where we're going to be. But how do you expect the course to play for the players? Sure, yeah. We've had a ton of rain here. We've been pretty fortunate, um, you know, in the recent storms to kind of scathe most of it. David Swift and our superintendent does a great job of keeping it up. But uh, the rough is very thick. It's very juicy. The greens will be fast, um, you know. so. Hitting fairways and hitting greens are really going to be important here. Um, the rough and the greens are really what's going to make it penal and your opportunities to score. Is there a hole or two that will be fairly tough for the players or, or which, uh, which holes are going to be the toughest for them? If you look at last year's statistics and probably what's going to happen this year as well, number three and number seven will be very tough. Uh, long par fours, they're going to test you uh, off the tee placement and then, you know, the biggest difference why it's going to be tough is because they're going to have very long clubs for their second shots, you know, long irons, even a hybrid or a fairway wood kind of leading into that. Um, so when you've got that kind of length coming in for your approach shot, it's going to be hard to score and make sure you get par. What are some of the easier holes and why? You know, um, number eight is one, probably our shortest par three. That's an opportunity to score. It's a little bit of a tough green though. Um, number 12 is a very risk reward par five where you know um, you can go over the water in two and maybe have a good chance at birdie um, bringing your scoring averages down number 15 is a drivable par four for a lot of players so um, worst comes to worst they have a short wedge in their hand with a good opportunity to come away with birdie i'd imagine yourself like most of the people excited for the legend series as well an opportunity to see jack nicholas hale Irwin, and, and players of that nature Oh yeah, anytime you've got players with such great history and uh, they've kind of carved their own path and everything to be able to go through there, uh, it's going to be exciting. There's going to be a lot of people around. It'll be, it'll be a great time and something fun to come out and watch. Well, enjoy the tournament. You're first here Thank at you. Minnehaha Country Club. Appreciate it. Look right. forward to it. Thank you, Justin. Well, in our final segment of Inside Kettle Land, we're talking with Executive Vice President at Sanford Health about sponsoring the tournament and its impact in South Dakota. We'll be right back. Welcome back to our final segment of Inside Kelloland. The Sanford International isn't all about the tournament. It also has a lasting impact on the Sioux Falls community and the charities that help kids. Joining us now is Micah Aberson, the Executive Vice President of Sanford Health, and thank you for joining us. Thanks, Travis. Great to be here. It's year number two of the tournament. What has you excited about the Sanford International? Yeah, we're awfully excited for year two of the Sanford International. Um, we had a great year, year one, uh, notwithstanding uh, a little bit of rain uh, that we're hoping uh, stays at bay this year. Uh, but it's going to be a fantastic year. We've got an unbelievable field of players that are coming in, some new names and faces. Davis Love III is going to be here. Bernard Langer is going to be here. So great champions that weren't able to be here last year. Uh, a great returning field of guys. Uh, John Daly committed and will be here again. Of course, we have the Legend Series again with, with Jack Nicklaus and Andy North. Uh, so, so many things to look forward to uh, that uh, we can't wait for a great week. Can you give us a little bit of insight into Sanford's role in the tournament? Yeah, we wanted to do something for this community. We wanted to be a part of uh, something in a big way uh, with the PGA Champions Tour, which is what led us to become the title sponsor for the event. Um, it's been fantastic for us. It's been great to engage our employees throughout this region. Uh, certainly, we've had uh, thousands of volunteers that have come forward. There's an economic impact back to the Sioux Falls region in excess of $20 million, which makes us feel great uh, about our role as a, a community player uh, in Sioux Falls and sort of the surrounding region. Uh, and we've had so many great partners that have come to the table. We couldn't do this by ourselves as Sanford Health. Uh, it takes an army and a village uh, and people like Cambria that have come forward as marquee sponsors, uh, Lewis Drug, et cetera, have been fantastic uh, and just shows the support around this region and this community for this event. Over the last couple of years, Sanford has really invested a lot of money into golfing in the Sioux Falls area beyond this tournament. There's new sure. facilities going up around the area, and, and it's just getting exciting uh, that golf is really taking off in the community. Yeah, that's right. We saw a real opportunity with golf. 
Uh, certainly it fits into uh, our uh, mission to, to try and keep people active and, and living healthy lifestyles. Um, but there was also a chance for us to introduce some of our orthopedics and sports medicine. Uh, we built out a golf academy with Todd Kolb as our lead instructor, which has been fantastic. Uh, certainly we're building the new Great Shots facility out at our sports complex. We've really uh, doubled down in the game of golf, and certainly the Sanford International is sort of the cherry on top of that uh, Sunday. What kind of feedback are you getting from the community with these new facilities and new opportunities? There's so much enthusiasm from the community. Uh, just the number of people that have come out to this tournament, 70,000 people last year, we're hoping to beat that number this year, the, the volunteers that I talked about, uh, but the energy around um, great shots and that facility opening has been fantastic. We can't wait for, for Good Friday to roll around and, and have a big grand opening there. Now part of the proceeds from the tournament end up going to the community, to charities. Talk a little bit about that and, and just uh, who's benefiting from that money and, and if you have a ballpark of uh, what your expectations are for this year. Sure, so um, the tournament itself operates as its own unique independent nonprofit. Uh, so every dollar that comes in, revenue over expense, goes back into the community, into to local charities, mostly children's charities. Certainly the Sanford Health Foundation is a beneficiary of that and goes to taking care of kids over the Children's Castle. Uh, we call it the Sanford International because it puts a spotlight on our international agenda, some of the things we're doing around the globe and in countries like Ghana and Costa Rica and, and China. Uh, and so the dollars will go back to supporting some of those missions, uh, as well as some of the other local not-for-profits in, in the community. You as a golf fan, what are you excited about for the Sanford International year two? Yeah, these guys are really, really good <laughs> golfers. Uh, and I think that it's easy to underestimate that. Uh, but when you come out and watch them, they can play. Uh, and it's fun for me as a fan of golf and as a player myself um, to, to watch them, to see how they play the game uh, from green to tee a lot of times. Uh, Jack Nicklaus told me that once. Uh, you know, think about playing the, the golf course backwards. It puts you in the best position. And to think, just to watch them uh, and how they strategically move their way around the golf course uh, is really educational. You know, with the fan experience compared to like the PGA Tour, these folks can get real close and, and the players seem to be real interactive with them. It, it's just got to be fun for the fans to get out and, and take part in the PGA Tour Champions. For sure. That's one of the unique things about the PGA Tour Champions uh, is that they are um, they're so approachable. They've reached an age and stage where they're still competitive, don't get me wrong, when they're inside the ropes. <laughs> Uh, but when they're outside the ropes, they, they know they're here to engage with the fans and to have a good time and to shake hands and to sign autographs. So they're, they're gentlemen, uh, they're great players, uh, and they have a lot of fun when they're here. Well, enjoy the tournament. Thank you. You too. <laughs> thank you very much. That's Micah Aberson. And thank you for joining us on Inside Kelloland. Remember to join us tomorrow night at 630 for our Kelloland Sports Special Sanford International as we kick off the tournament at the Minnehaha Country Club. We'll talk with a caddy about helping the pros during the tournament and show you how a new app will help you navigate the course. You can catch the special Monday, September 16th at 6.30 right here on Kello TV. Have a good night, everyone.